In this video, we're going to be looking at image. Every, I think, good UI library should have a specific way to handle images because I think it's just courteous. Your, your library is always going to have forms, but it's most always going to have images too, right? Text. And so Chakra covers all those, and I think the way that it also does stuff for you with images is super cool. So we're going to be looking at the docs seeing all the interesting things that it could do for us very easily out of the gate. And then we're going to do some cool, fun examples. So let's get to the documentation. And so it says the image component is used to display images. Well, that's a no brainer, right? And it says image composes box. So you could use all the style props and add responsive styles as well. So you could, you know, since it's essentially a super powered div, you could do all this and more is what they're trying to say. So we just bring an image right here. Sweet, one simple thing. Look at this stud right here. It's got the tie. Like, I can't even tie a tie. I have to, like, watch a video and reverse it. It's very embarrassing. So I just wear hoodies. And so we have a box. Box size small, so that's kind of just the container it's going to be put in. And then we have the image in here. We have the source, so we're pulling it from a website. And then we have the alt text. And please, always use alt text. I know... It's very easy to forget. I've forgotten before, but um, if your team doesn't have a um, like an accessibility phase that it goes through, there should be part of your, you know, sprint release review something that you know looks for alt text. And so what we could do here is look at the the size of the images here, and so it says the size of the image can be adjusted to the box size prop. And so we have the row, as you can see, it is a row. We have these distinct images here. We have box sizes. We have 100 pixels, 150, and 200. But we also have this object fit, which is cool. And that is a way we have cover here. And it's a way to make your image fit more neatly and nicely inside of its container. Could Because sometimes when you have an image, and you're trying to, maybe you get it within the boundaries you want it to, but sometimes it's um, maybe a little to the left or to the right or just looks kind of funky. And so the object fit is a really nice way to kind of just evenly and nicely just plop an image in and not have to think about too much you know, CSS after the fact. And then we have image with border radius. And we have the border radius full on here. And we have the box size 150. And you see we create this nice circular um, type of picture here, which I do dig the circular pictures myself. And if you're gonna have a square, I prefer slightly rounded edges, but I guess you know everything is fashion, so that could be, you know, I guess changed in a few years if you know hard edges come back. I don't know. But once again. You don't have to look up the border radius stuff. How do I this? How do I that? You just type in border radius equals full and, you know, slap, you know, your own mug in here and you have a picture like this. So we have fallback support. It says you could provide a fallback image for when there is an error loading the source. So maybe if you're using a website or maybe you have something... <laughs> that uh, maybe you have an intern, right? Maybe it's not an intern, maybe it's a senior person. You accidentally blow away or screw up the path of an image. You could have a fallback source right here, and in, right here is doing 150 by 150x. And so it says you could also opt out of this behavior by passing ignore fallback prop. It's nice, I think, um, to have something that shows something should have been there. Or maybe some text that said, sorry, something failed to load. But once again, that depends on your design, your iteration, you know, your needs. But it's really cool. They give you a fallback if something is, you know, wrong here. Because otherwise this may be, you know, I could see some teams making this a separate component. And then inside of another, you know, bigger component, you have these if else statements and you have two renders going on and it could get a little murky. This is a nice way of just handling it on one line. And I think that is cool. A lot of these things seem pretty simple duh, out of the box, but I think they will save you 
quite a few lines and also like planning and logic in your code just by having something simple like this. And so if you're using version one, feel free to read through here. I haven't used this previously, but I guess obviously, you know, as you go from one major version to another, you kind of want to see what the changes are. Are they breaking? Is there any new stuff I should do? Or is there any props or attributes I need to rename? You could use it with SSR as well. If you're into using that, I think, uh, was it server-side rendering? I know Next.js is really big with that. But we also have the props, good old props in here. Feel free to play around, look at them, get to know them. But I feel like getting my hands dirty, so let's go ahead and code. In this video, we're going to be looking at, well, in this part of the video, I should say, it's kind of weird when you record these in certain sections and then you piece them together at the end. We're just going to look at images. I'm going to give you one example. Uh, the docs do a really good job, but this is, a very, I think, a very useful example of how to put an image in something and then kind of fill it and uh, make it form to whatever it is you're putting it in. So as you can see up here, I have a import of my dog Bernie from the folder right here. And let's go ahead and make an image inside of this box. And so you see right here, we have this picture of my dog, Bernie. He's awfully cute. He's taking a nap right now. And he's probably wondering why I'm saying his name. And he's like in his crate with blankets over it so he could sleep better. We could say we have this, uh, we could see we have this image here. And the original image is, this is the sixth one here. We see this image is like rectangular, right? And it looks kind of smushed right over here. So that, that kind of sucks. We don't want that. So how do we get around that? Because maybe we do want something like this. We have an image that more faithfully, you know, looks good and we don't have to do much here. But how could we how could we change this to a degree? So let's use um, this attribute here, object fit. And there's a few ways we could do stuff in here, but let's just do cover. And so this is great. So this makes it less smushed together here. But what if I wanted to do something with the radius? What if I wanted to style it a little bit more? Well, I could go ahead and do this. We see we have all these examples here. I'm going to select full. And we see that we have this circle right here. It's almost like that avatar example we did. If I wanted to come in with a border radius and do, I don't know, 2XL. You know, we could start styling this a little bit more, and this starts to look a little bit natural, flows in a little bit better with our content. If we just took the object fit and then the border radius off, it may be okay for like maybe a beginner website, but it, it, it loses those little hints of um, style, and also it looks less modern. And here or there, if you don't know what you're doing, that's fine. We iterate. That's what happens in technology. We, you know, put stuff out and make it better over time. But it's just little tiny things like this. And I know this isn't the best picture. This is a one-off thing here. I'd most likely want to take a, uh, a photo, resize it, crop it, or whatever. But it's the little things like that that build trust between you and your end user. And if your end user is also purchasing something, you don't want that professionalism to be lacking anywhere because that means less money for you. But I'm going to get off my soapbox. If you like this stuff, like, share, subscribe. I hope you have fun with the images component here. And I'll see y'all in the next video.